theorem just summarizes what uh, this rewriting really means. So I showed you we could write a linear system as a linear combination of vectors. In the, the correct vectors in the correct dimension, or the vectors represent the, <coughs> for example, the first vector represents the first coordinates coefficients. So there's kind of two ways to break down a linear system. One way is you can break it down, I guess you call this vertically right here, by column. So I can rewrite it as each of these coefficients as a column, and then the s system becomes a linear combination of those column vectors. So I can break it down this way, or I could write it in a matrix <clears throat> and kind of go row by row. So there's two ways to break it down. Uh, they both, uh, you can solve it either way. I like to put things in a matrix and solve it row uh, reduction the way we've been doing it before. So that's how I'm going to solve most of these problems. I think it's the easiest way to go. Uh, it requires writing the least amount of stuff. I mean, if you just look at just this second area right here, there's so much more than just the coefficients written down. There's extra parentheses, there's x1, x2, x3, some pluses, some equal signs. Actually, oh, let's see. I'll undo all this, but I'm just, oops. I'll try to do this in one stroke, but I'll end up taking some other stuff out too. So this is the spacing is way bigger than it should be, but that's basically what it would look like in a matrix. I think I raised, I don't know, half the symbols or so, so you can write down a whole lot less time. So again, most efficient is put it in a uh, matrix to row operations. That's what this theorem is going to say right here. This theorem, solutions to linear systems are linear combinations. So we've talked about vector form of solution sets. So that's the next subsection. So we can jump over to that. Let's do a really big, ugly example. I think that'll be illustrative. And then uh, we'll go to the next section. So I think we've been mostly doing like three equations, three unknowns, maybe four unknowns four equations. Let's step away up to uh, seven. Yeah, let's get crazy. So I'm going to write down, let's start it as a, let's start as a linear system. So convert the linear system into a linear combo of vectors. Oh, that's the laziest letter I've written. That's an E and an A put together. <laughs> there we go. So our system will be X1 equals All right, actually I'll write it in the form that's written in the book. <coughs> so X1, X2, we're writing a column vector, X3, X4, X5, X6, X7. So we have seven variables. So our first will be 15 minus 2x cubed plus 3x to the fourth minus 9x7. Uh, Second, so this will be x2 equation, negative 10 plus 5x cubed minus 4x4 plus 8x7. 
the cubed or x I'm saying the wrong thing, but I think I'm writing the right thing. Yeah. I'm saying them as exponents, but writing them as subscripts. But as long as you mean what I know, we should be okay. So x3 is just x3, x4 is just x4. I'll ask you about what this means for free variables in a minute. But let's finish writing this. This is the x5, the fifth row. It will be 11 plus 6x7. And x6 is negative 21 minus 7x7. And last up, x7 is just x7. <coughs> So this is not written as a linear combination of vectors. Let's run up and look at what is a linear combination of vectors going to look like. Somewhere up here, here we go. We're going to have a vector times a scalar plus a vector times a scalar plus a vector times a scal scalar. Uh, and this is supposed to equal a vector. So we'll put a vector on the right side. The vector on the right side is supposed to be uh, just a constant vector. I'm using the letter B for constant vector. So I'm going to rewrite this, except we have seven variables, so it's going to look like seven variables and seven uh, constants. So we're turning this into a linear combination of vectors. So it's going to look like alpha 1. Now it's supposed to be vector 1, not x1, but vector 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 plus alpha 3 v 3 plus alpha 4 v 4 plus alpha 5 v 5 plus alpha 6 v 6 plus alpha 7 v 7 equals vector b. All right, so our linear system is in a weird form. What I'm going to do is turn it into a, what's the best way to go here? Let's write out the seven equations, but we want to order them in numeric order and have our constants on the other side. So I'm going to do this for equation one, and then you're going to do this for the other six. So in equation one, equation one is x1 equals 15 minus 2x3 plus 3x4. 4 minus 9x7 so that's our first linear equation what I'm going to do now is put the constant on the right side and then bring all my variables to the left so variables on the left constant on the right and I'll just write this to the right here so numerically ordered it's x1 plus I'm gonna write 0 x2 well that'll take too long there's gonna be a lot of zeros we just won't write them uh, so plus 2 x3 minus 3 x4 plus 9 x7 and I want my constant on the right side so that 15 stays where it is if you want to compare equations, remember these equations are the same. So to compare equations, I use a triple equal sign to say that the equations mean the same thing. I'm just going to leave that blank space in between to separate them. They're just on the same, same line. So any questions on turning the first? Again, all I did was I rewrote the first equation by itself, and then I did a tiny bit of algebra, put the constant on one side, variables on the other. So any questions on what I did? right here. Now there's really only three other rows that are significant. The, uh, the, there's three rows that are insignificant, meaning they're free variables, so there's really only three more rows to do. So go ahead and do those three rows right now. Make sure you write it increasing order of variables, constant on the right side. And there's going to be plenty of variables missing. So just be careful as you write those. So I'm going to zoom into the matrix so you can Make sure you write them down correct. All right, so do that right now. Write your other six equations and then basically solve for the constant.
How did I get the three zero equals zero equations? They're free variables. They're free variables. So x three equals x three. You've probably heard the expression in English. Uh, what do they say? Like x is x, or they say it is what it is. Very unuseful. We already know. You get the identity. Things always equal to themselves. So it is what it is. Thanks. Great. Not helpful. So you don't need. You already knew x uh, zero equals zero before you got here, so those hopefully don't inform you of anything. So there's really four equations that we have. Let's put them into an augmented matrix. They're in the right order, so let's go ahead and put them into a matrix, <coughs> the way we usually do it with a linear system. Our matrix really has four rows, not seven rows, like it looked like it was going to have. So there's really only four rows you need. You could put some rows of zeros if you want to, but that's not um, going to be too useful. Make sure you skip. We have, for example, we have no x2 in the first row, so your x2 needs to have explicitly a zero. Any questions on this augmented matrix? We've done this process quite a bit, so that should be pretty uh, routine by now. So once we're looking at this matrix, you've hopefully looked at enough matrices by now that are uh, reduced. You can tell this is reduced. It's a little bit weird because our ones, I'm going to circle all the ones that are locking down variables. They're not nicely lined up in a diagonal. So what does that mean about column three? and four. They're free. they're free. So they're not getting locked down right there. So we got free, two free variables. Is there another free variable? Seven. That last variable is also free. Because the seven doesn't lock it down, it's the first non-zero in the row that locks it down when it's reduced. So there's going to be three free variables. Let's go back to our original representation and try to see how many free variables we have in that. So you should be able to tell which are free here. We're usually doing the problem the other way around where we go from the matrix to this, but this time we're going the other direction. So free variables means you can pick any value for x3, x4, and x7. <coughs> Those values determine x5, x6, x1, and x2. So there's four fixed and three free here. So you can see, you can pick anything you want for x3, x4, and x7, and that's going to determine the fixed. All right, now that we've written it out in many different ways, let's write it down the way that I actually described it. I want to write as a linear combination of vectors. Grab the form from, there are several choices here. I think the easiest one is actually the original or maybe the second one. I'm going to go with the, nope. We actually have to write out, and I think it's actually easiest to go. All right, so before we start writing this down, how many dimensions do you think these vectors have? There's a couple reasonable choices. Let's look at B. How many dimensions should B have? 
It looks like it should be seven. Uh, all right, so vector one is going to come from why I'm struggling with this. It's been too long since I did linear algebra. <coughs> So we know what well, we need it because it's not zero, so it will be it will be significant. All right, let's rewrite our original system. All I'm going to do is separate things out, <coughs> and then we'll slowly turn it into a, a proper linear combination in that form. So let's write this. Basically your x, x1 becomes alpha 1, x2 is going to become alpha 2, x3 is going to become alpha 3, etc. Uh, and then the constants, the terms without x is going to become without any x's are going to be the constants. All right, we'll come back to setting this up tomorrow. Right, any questions on the different forms that we did write down though? Okay. <coughs> 